Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, August 5th. So we do have the moon still in Leo energy because of course we're still in the new moon window. And of course, because this is the day after the new moon just popped off, many of us may be in for a post lunar hangover. Again, feeling either slow and sluggish or a little bit manic, depending on where your energy is being activated in your chart. There's a whole slew of different ascension symptoms that we can experience in lunar energy. If you want to take a listen to this week's ascension forecast, just to get the highlights on where the energy is kind of bringing attention to the physical form, definitely stay ahead of the game. If you haven't downloaded your new moon guide and done the new moon ritual, there's still time for that as well in order to stay ahead of the game, stay in alignment with this particular pivot point. And of course, there are astro forecasts, there's zodiac forecasts, there's all kinds of information and content out there in order for you to to stay in alignment with these ever-changing energies. Monday, ruled over by the moon. We're still in the dark phase of the moon. There's no illumination in the sky. The moon in this Leo energy is going to go void, of course, at 11.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're sitting in it. We're sitting in the void. We're sitting in the funk. We're sitting in the insert insecurities, uncertainties until 5.17 p.m., at which time we're going to lock into Virgo energy. Fun fact, the transition from Leo energy to Virgo energy is always a noticeable one. We are heart aligned. We're all up in the fields. We're having big ideas. There's a lot of emotion with that Leo energy. The Virgo energy, not so much. It's an earth sign ruled over by Mercury. And fun fact, Mercury is about to go retrograde at four degrees in Virgo energy here today as well. So the Virgo energy is the fixer, the healer, the problem solver of the Zodiac. But most of the time, especially at the beginning of a Virgo transit, we have to focus on the problems. We have to identify the issues in order for us to start problem solving, in order for us to fix, heal, and repair them as we move through the Virgo energy. So we're definitely going to be more, I'm going to say critical, analytical. We're removing the emotion, which, you know, for the most part, all of us could use a little bit of a break. However, we're still in the new moon window. So emotions are going to be a thing regardless of whether or not we're in an earth energy or not. There's still a realization that needs to be had on where it is that we're, again, having a breakdown slash breakthrough slash pivot moment with our happiness, with our joy, with what it is that we want to do, what we want to pursue from here. It's almost as if we have a realization, we have an epiphany, we have an aha moment, we have big ideas, big feels in the Leo energy. And then in the Virgo energy, we have to figure out how to bring it to life. This is where planning and strategizing comes in, where the elimination process of removing aspects out of our lives have to take place in order to clear the space, clean the slate for us to start building towards something new. So we definitely take on more of an introverted role in the Virgo energy. We take more of a analyzing, evaluating type of role because we have to figure out what needs to stay, needs to go in contrast to this new vision, this new goal, this new dream that now we are excited to pursue. So as I previously mentioned, Mercury is going to go retrograde here today, four degrees in Virgo energy. There's a whole astro forecast about it. If you want to go take a listen, bust out your Leo season e-guide, capture the topics and themes, capture your focus. What's going on right now? Because we're going to have to revisit these particular ideas, this particular highlight, this particular situation, circumstance, and scenario in a couple of weeks. Okay, so it's good to jot it down. It's good to capture it. We are going to need to reference what is going on right now in about three weeks, four weeks time. So we are going to experience a lot of head ascension symptoms here today. Again, listen to the ascension forecast for the week especially when Mercury first kind of, you know, pivots, there is more of an impact and influence 
on that headspace. We are going to be a little bit cluster after in our headspace, feeling confused, second guessing ourselves, just kind of bouncing around all over the place. So we wanna just be aware and prepared that today is probably gonna be a weird day. It's gonna feel weird inside of us. We're questioning things that we haven't really questioned as of late. And something's off, but we just can't put our finger on it. Spoiler alert, it's Mercury. Okay, so let's jump into it. There's 12 different aspects taking place here today. 10 of them are going to involve the moon. 49 minutes into the day, Mercury is going to go retrograde. So we are wasting no time. And again, if you've listened to the new moon in Leo forecast, you would know that Mercury was technically standing still at that pivotal point where he was kind of, you know, in a direct position under the new moon influence, but also not moving, standing still. We had a perfect perspective where it is that we want to go, where it is that we're coming from, where it is that we're at. And now that he's pivoting in a retrograde, now we have to just rearrange and restructure a couple of things. So the moon still in the Leo energy, going to make a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger, who, of course, is still in this Gemini energy. He had a major starring role under the new moon in Leo. If you didn't know, now you know. Download the moon guide. Emotionally speaking, this is like a pep in our stop. We're feeling good about this. We're feeling excited. We're feeling inspired. We're building in our motivation, our determination to actually take action, make a plan, make a strategy, and see a certain goal target actually come into fruition. This is going to put us in a good mood, a good attitude. We may feel a little bit of restlessness, a little bit of ants in our pants, if you will. There's a buzz taking place and the buzz is what we're excited to do what we're excited to pursue the moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with the north node in aries energy that north node trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission our soul's potential our new goals our new purpose but this is an awkward interaction so although we're excited we just kind of you know have this activation with mars um, although we're excited, although we're inspired, now we're just like, okay, well, where can I take my first step forward? You know, where is there an opportunity for me to make a change right now? Like, even if it's a small change, how can I start like leaning towards and orienting myself towards this new path, this new goal, this new target, this new vision? So not necessarily a negative energy, but again, tapping into the confusion, like, okay, here's where we would like to go. But how do we take the first step in actually getting there? The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, now retrograde in Aries energy. A trine is a gentle nudge, a growth point, if you will, in the right direction. And because this is a trine, it means that we're working with like-minded elements, the fire energy from the moon in Leo, the fire energy from Chiron in Aries. This is a beautiful interaction for us to kind of, again, be building in passion, in desire, in excitement, in inspiration to move on, to move forward. Now, Chiron, the wounded healer, he's being aspected in a positive light, which means that we're not focused on the wounds. We're focused on where we're building our self-esteem up, where we're building in self-confidence, self-deserving, self-worth, where we're actually starting to see that we're at a good point within our lives, within our circumstances, within the relationship dynamic with self, that we're actually feeling pretty optimistic about what we can accomplish. We're feeling capable, which hasn't happened in a very long time. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune. So Neptune, of course, is at the 29th critical crisis degree of his rulership in Pisces energy. He is retrograde. Um, this kind of tells me that, again, we are nearing the end of the Leo energy that the moon is in. Because, of course, you have to get at that 29th degree. Then you start interacting with all the planets that are at 29th degree. Hey, Neptune, we're talking about you. Neptune rules over our spirituality, our intuition, our dreams, our creativity. 
And at this particular juncture, because this is a positive interaction, we're just building this goal, this vision, this dream. We are building in our purpose, in our mission. We're being renewed and refreshed, spiritually speaking. We're feeling good and confident and optimistic about what we're now wanting to do, wanting to pursue. And so this is a good vibe. Again, a little bit of a reminder what we're working towards. We're feeling, I'm going to say, fulfilled in our soul and our spirit that this is a mission, a calling that feels good to our mind, body, and soul. And we are, again, just kind of elaborating on some of the details that are needed in order for us to fine tune what we actually want to manifest. Now, here we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's fresh in this Virgo energy in case you missed it. She shifted into Virgo energy late last evening. Yes, we had the new moon in Leo in the morning. Venus was at that 29 critical crisis degree of the heart and soul of the zodiac in Leo energy. And then she shifted into the Virgo energy basically at the end of the day. If you missed that astro forecast, go ahead, take a listen. Venus at this point in Virgo energy making a very harsh interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So what we know is that Pluto tends to turn the volume all the way up intensely putting our thoughts, our emotions on spotlight, especially where our conditioning is concerned, where survival programming is concerned. Now, Venus in this Virgo energy, again, as I previously mentioned, the first part of any Virgo transit is identifying the problems in order for us to fix them. And where Venus is concerned, this has everything to do with our happiness, our joy, our safety, security, our stability, especially in our day to day life where routines, relationships, money matters are concerned. Now, this particular interaction, because Pluto is retrograde, again, inner journey, inner analyzation, in Aquarius energy, again, focused on where we would like to go, right? So we have a, a, a kind of like a good vision building here of where the destination is the most favorable. Uh, the Aquarius energy needs us to take a good look at where we can make some improvements. Well, the Virgo energy wants to improve as well. But here's the thing. The Virgo energy breaks things down, meaning we are highly judgmental, highly critical, picking things apart picking things apart to the point where the Aquarius energy is like really focused on, okay, the Aquarius energy is the big picture. The Virgo energy is okay. The smaller pieces that make up the greater, grander whole. So this is definitely going to trigger some uncertainty, going to put us in a situation where we're feeling the growing pains. We are about to make a major move. Uh, we're about to have a major growth spurt. And so there's a lot of like, reassessing, reevaluating who and what needs to stay needs to go, especially our most personal relationships, right? Because Venus, again, she's all about her love and her money. So where, you know, love is concerned, not just romantic love, just, you know, the love that you have for the people that you're choosing to share time, energy and space with, we're kind of taking a, uh, we're reevaluating, right? Who is supporting us? Who is encouraging us? Who is filling up our cup and who is sucking the life force energy out of us when it comes to our money we have to analyze you know our spending habits are we overspending should we be spending our money on different things there's room for improvement we're taking a good look at our social interactions what's making us feel like we are being accepted especially with this new version of self and some interactions where they whoever they are are trying to kind of trigger the old version of self to come back out to play and we don't want to do that what we do have is a heaviness, a weight of focus on where it is that we're a little bit fearful. What are we fearful about? You may ask, well, we're fearful for making the changes that we know that we need to make because what if we're wrong? What if we hurt other people's feelings? What if we make those changes and cut people off or make certain changes and totally rearrange our physical realm and we're still no better. We're still no happier. Okay. So this is where the uncertainty is coming in. It definitely doesn't feel good. It's triggering and activating our shadow self. That's what Pluto needs us to do. We have to examine the darker parts of our inner workings of our mind, inner workings of our heart space in order to flip the script and actually empower ourselves in a better situation, a better circumstance. The moon in Leo energy going to get in the boxing ring square off with 
Uranus, the great awakener, who is in Taurus energy. So first of all, this is the last aspect that the moon is going to be making before going void, of course. So that's an interesting dynamic because, again, we're forward thinking in this particular aspect. Now, Taurus energy is a fixed earth sign. Leo energy is a fixed fire sign. What do you get when fire and earth come together and there's tension, there's conflict, there's an explosion? Well, you could get a whole damn forest fire that just burns everything down if you're not careful. What we're getting here is an illumination on where it is that our heart space is craving change, craving something different, craving new mission, new purpose, new happiness, new joy, new pleasure. Uranus tends to want to, you know, be on that side. Uranus wants to make a spontaneous change. He wants to help free us from the mundane, same old, same old. The problem here is this fixed earth energy of Taurus energy. Taurus energy is our physical body, our physical realm. And even if we know that we have to make a change, even if we have decided within ourselves, yes, I'm making a change. There is this part of fixed energy that resists the changes that we know that we need to make. So a square is highlighting where, in this case, our heart is on one page and our, I'm going to say, our ability to actually make moves to make those changes are on a totally different page. In some cases, a totally different book. A square indicates the tension and conflict because we're going through a growing spurt. This is growing pains. And normally, Mr. Uranus brings a little bit of clarity. Normally, he brings this like mood and attitude where we're ready to make a change. We're ready to kind of pivot. But this is a square. So he's bringing all the confusion. The confusion is my heart wants me to kind of go in this direction, but I'm confused as F how to break free from the realm, from the reality, from the construct that I myself have created. Right. It's like we're realizing where we have essentially created the obstacles, the blocks, the challenges that now we need to push through in order to make a change. And now we're just like, maybe it's easier just to keep things the same. So definitely not a good vibe, not a good mind space, not a good heart space. And again, the moon goes void, of course, at 1117 AM. So now the moon is going void. What happens when the moon is void? We're shaky. We're unstable. We're uncertain. We start second guessing everything. So we're really feeding off of this last interaction. While the moon is void though, the moon in Leo energy will be making a positive interaction with Jupiter. So Jupiter is our hype girl. He's the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. He's basically encapsulating all of the wisdom that we've learned from the tough love life lessons that we've already gone through. He's in Gemini energy. This is a positive interaction, which means that he's trying to bring us out of our funk. He's trying to build us up. He's trying to say, hey, you know what? The minute that you decide, because again, he's in Gemini energy, so our decisions, our choices are very extreme, are very dualistic. Uh, the minute that you decide on what you want to do, the minute that you focus on what needs to be done, you can do it. You are being filled with optimism and confidence. You're being reassured that you have the capabilities to do whatever it is that needs to be done. This, again, while the moon is void, is going to be a positive interaction for us, just reminding us that guess what? You're creating your own confusion. You're creating your own blockages. The minute that you decide to kind of, you know, seek clarity, the minute you decide to choose a path, a direction, you're going to be able to do it. You can do anything that you put your mind, Gemini energy and heart, Leo energy to. 4.32 p.m., the moon is going to make a very harsh interaction with Neptune. Again, 29 degrees, we expect this. So earlier, we had, you know, this interaction with Neptune that reminded us of the vision, the goal, the dream, that kind of restored our hope, our faith, our wishes, that just kind of, you know, gave us a little bit of energy to fine-tune what we're excited and inspired to actually bring to life. This time, nope, we're confused as F. We're actually overwhelmed to the point where we don't even care about our goal or vision or dream anymore. We've realized that it comes with a very long to-do list that we don't feel energetically prepared to do. And so now we're starting to talk ourselves out of it. Now we're starting to kind of fall apart at the seams. Do we really love it or was it just an exciting moment? You know what I mean? Like now we're really picking ourselves apart. We're beating ourselves up. We're breaking ourselves down. And now we're trying to talk ourselves out of 
the inspiration, the excitement that we had earlier on in the day. 5.17 p.m., the moon moves into Virgo energy. 6.22 p.m., we have the very first aspect with the moon in Virgo, which happens to be a very tough interaction with Pluto, who, of course, the great transformers retrograde in this Aries energy. So again, many times you'll hear me say, Virgo energy, Pluto energy, when they interact, beautiful things happen. Why? Because you have to break down and dissect why you are the way you are. Where the seat in your programming, in your conditioning got planted, where it's actually preventing you, limiting you from doing what needs to be done. And in the realization of kind of, you know, unearthing these particular seeds, you get to take your power back and understand, is this working for me? Is this encouraging me? Is this helping me to get to where I need to go? Spoiler alert, the answer is no. The minute that you identify that it's no longer working for you and you have the awareness of where those seeds got planted and spoiler alert, probably wasn't planted by you. It's whoever raised you because we're going back to the first seven years of our life when our unconscious programming actually got kind of written by our environment and those involved in our, let's call it molding of who it is that they needed us to be. Now we're unlearning, unpacking all of that. So emotionally speaking, yeah, things are going to get intense. They need to. We have to identify the problem in order to fix it. We do have a major, major opportunity to rewire our brain, to flip the script, to change the narrative. But we have to be aware that that old narrative isn't working for us in order for us to improve it. 7.25 p.m., again, all Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to come up to bump into Venus. Venus is fresh in this Virgo energy. So there's a conjunction here. What do we know about conjunctions? It's a reset. What is a reset? Something's coming to an end. Something is about to begin. What are we kind of focused on? We're focused on the emotional disposition that we have about our current circumstances, our current realm and reality, where our routine relationships and money matters are concerned. This is feeding off of the not so nice placement that we had earlier in the day between Venus and Pluto, where we get illuminated to where we're actually holding fear from making some of the changes that we know that we need to make. That is what we're letting go. What we are initiating, what we're beginning is this analyzation, this evaluation process of what could make us feel better? What could make us feel happier, more safe, more secure? What could make us feel, I'm going to say, more positive about the changes that we know that we need to make? Either way, there's a hard activation. Listen to the Ascension forecast. We talk very, very, very detailed about how hard activations actually manifest. This is one of them. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon now going to be making a positive interaction with the north node in aries energy we love this why because we're getting down to the nitty-gritty we're not wasting any time what are we not wasting time on figuring out a plan figuring out a strategy that north node is trying to get us on the right path the moon in virgo trying to put the pieces together by a step-by-step -step process on how it is that we're going to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be again emotionally mentally we are focused on what are we doing what needs to stay what needs to go whatever's staying how do we double down on that how do we anchor it in to make it stronger even more than that now we have a destination that we would like to end up what can we do to actually get there what needs to be cleared out of the way cleared out of the path what needs to be kind of taken action upon even if it's small things because again virgo energy small details that make up the greater grander picture here what do we have power and control over in this present moment in the here and now the smaller things in life in order for us to get to where it is that we want to be. We are going to very slowly, let me be very, very clear in saying this, very slowly, but also very surely over the next couple of days, we are going to gain a little bit of clarity on the initial moves that need to be made in order to get us from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. <laughs>